In this video today, I will be showing you how to install Arch Linux with the Cosmic Desktop environment. You will be able to test out Cosmic on your own systems easily and see if you like it. Without further ado, let's begin. Cosmic is developed by the people at System76. It was created in order for Pop OS to move away from GNOME into a new independent environment. The main features of this environment is the unique set of features that it offers, things like easy window tiling and customization. The granular control it provides for setting certain workspaces to be automatically tiled or floaty makes it very different from other desktops. It also has an abundance of theming options and its own set of apps. It's written in Rust and is expected to be very fast and efficient. Be aware that this is still in alpha, but development is progressing rapidly so. It won't be long until we can get a stable release. You can download it on Fedora, NixOS, Arch and many other distributions. In today's video I will be using a base Arch Linux system and install the Cosmic Desktop environment on top of it. We need to boot up the Arch Linux ISO. After that, before we run the Arch install script, we need to add a flag to it. Run Arch install with the flag advanced. So that will be something like Arch install dash dash advanced. It's the usual Arch install process we get via the script. We first select our language, then layouts, mirrors, and localization. We then need to set up the partitions next. Just go with the guided partitioning. I'm leaving the bootloader and the swap on default. Next, I need to supply a host name. We then provide a root password. Following that, we will need to create a user and subsequent password. Make sure the user has pseudo privileges. The profiles option is the most important thing we have to pay attention in this case. We need to go to Desktop and choose Cosmic. Select it and proceed. Select the appropriate drivers and continue. I'll leave the kernel on the default option. For the audio server, just choose Pulse Audio unless you want pipe wire. After we are finished with that, we can begin the installation process. Consequently, when the installation is completed, simply shut down and boot the system from start. When it reboots, you will find that you are met with a TTY. This is expected as there seems to be some issues with the Cosmic Cruiser right now. We will have to use a different login manager. There are various options available, but I will go with LightDM. Simply install LightDM and its related greeter. Along with these packages, you will also need a text editor, something like Vim. But if you're more comfortable with editors like Nano, then you can use that too. Open this file with elevated access. Here you need to go to the line that says Cdol. Then add the following. creator session equals lightdm gtk creator Save the file and exit. Upon completion, you will need to enable the service. Then reboot. Here you can see that Cosmic is selected and available. Just enter your password and login. This is Arch Linux with the Cosmic desktop. It's much more minimal than running it with Pop! OS since Pop! OS comes bundled with a lot of other applications. Okay, let's proceed first with the features of the new Cosmic Desktop. We have a Workspaces tab here, where you will get an overview of the active virtual desktops. Here you can see that I have two workspaces open right now. One of the things that annoys me slightly is the fact that I can't close the Workspace tab by clicking anywhere on the desktop. I can do it with the Applications tab and the Calendar, but not the Workspaces. Next is the Application Shortcut. Here we barely see any programs installed. This is due to the fact that with us you get a very minimalist system. We have the Calendar here. 
We have the other applets too, things like layout and networking. Something unique to Cosmic is this tiling applet here. We'll come back to that later. Another thing that is unique for Cosmic is the runner application here. It feels very fast and quick and we can launch apps by typing out their names. We can also switch between windows, for example I can switch between the browser and the terminal very easily. Next we will be going through the settings application to see what things we can find under the hood. In a wallpaper section we have the option of setting a different wallpaper for a different screen in the case of multiple monitor setups. There is also an option which allows us to use a slideshow instead of a single wallpaper. So we can cycle through multiple different wallpapers of our choosing. If we go into appearance we have the standard light and dark modes. We also have a plethora of choices when it comes to accent colors we can choose. There is really a lot of customizations we can do with regards to the colors. I know that even the background of windows can be changed as well as the hinting colors for the selected window. We can choose different rounded corner variations too. Likewise, we can also change the hint sizes for the windows. And also change the gaps between windows when we are in tiling mode. In experimental features, we have icon themes only at the moment. The panel can also be hidden or shown as per our own needs. Moreover, the gaps on the sides adjacent to the corners can also be given some padding if you prefer this look more. Obviously, we can add more applets too. There are dozens to choose from. I'll try adding one. Next is the dock, where we can do similar things like changing the positions, messing with opacity, changing the size and adding more icons as well as applets. In Windows Management sub-option, we can change what the Super or the Windows key does. We can show the minimize and close buttons too. There are also some workspace settings. In Display, we have the typical options along with fractional scaling as well. In Power Modes, you have different power profiles based on your requirements. If this does not show up for you, then you will need to install the package called Power Profiles Daemon. Currently, you can't sync stuff like your online accounts on Nextcloud or Google, but I believe this will probably change in the future. Let's check out the tiling feature next. I'll just open a few windows to test it out on. A browser and a few terminals with different things open in them. Let me toggle tiling on. We can use Super G to pop the window out of the tiling structure. And we can use Super Plus the arrow keys to change focus to the different windows. If we use Super Plus Shift Plus arrow keys, then we can change the orientation and position. This feels very intuitive and is very smooth, and I have to say I am really liking it. I'm definitely very surprised at how smooth and well animated this is. I can do a column layout and also a master and stack layout. I've had issues with something like Hyperland in relation to animations in the past, but this works flawlessly without any additional tinkering. Another neat feature is the fact that we can set tiling only for certain workspaces. Or if we want, we can set tiling on for all workspaces. This is nice if you want floating in some virtual desktops, but not on others. Finally, let's go through some of the applications that come pre-installed in the Cosmic Desktop environment. First, we have the App Store. It looks nice, but it will not work in Arch. Here we can see several applications listed with their details, but if we try to install any of them, we will be met with error. This is due to the reason that we are running this on Arch and not Pop! OS. It can't find the Pop! OS repositories, as they don't exist here. If you want a graphical package manager or notch, you can install something like Pamac or Octopi. Though I would highly advise against it and just use the terminal and Pacman to install your applications. Next is the Cosmic Files app. It is a well-designed and sleek file manager with some options and viewing modes. This is pretty bare bones in my opinion, but I believe it does its job well. We can change icon size and so on. This is the about info for the app if you want to check that out. Let's check out the text editor next. 
This is the Kazik text editor. It has a few features. Things like highlight line, line numbers, word wrap, and so on. It has a ton of color schemes already installed and available. Since the system is so minimal, we would probably need to add a few applications to round out the environment. It includes several useful fonts, a few spell checking packages. I would also like to install LibreOffice for opening documents. You would also need an image viewer and a video player. And finally, a PDF viewer. In conclusion, I really love the Cosmic desktop environment. It's sleek and modern along with feeling very smooth and responsive. I believe that if development progresses at the same pace that it's on now, it will definitely outshine Num as well as KDE in the future. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe.